sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. So hi, welcome back here on this channel. And today we are going to tackle about sleeping. Who doesn't love sleeping, right? Personally, I love sleeping. Sleeping allows you to have the energy to give it out and also allows you to have a long-term memory. But before diving in, let us first tackle about different areas of sleeping. And for this video, you are going to learn or we are going to learn about sleeping and also I will give you tips and techniques in how to manage insomnia. And if you want to learn more, then just keep on watching. Well, there are a lot of researches and studies already about sleeping. And we will try to break it down for you so that we'll be able to know further about sleeping. Because sleeping is not just about sleeping alone. Sleeping allows us to discover more things about our brain and how our body functions during sleeping and inactivity. So we are going to talk about sleeping, insomnia, and more, and how sleeping constitutes and subparts different areas of our wellness and also our system. So let's go. So first, what is sleep? So sleep is a dynamic activity nerve signaling chemicals called neurotransmitters control whether we are asleep or awake by acting on different groups of nerve cells or neurons in the brain. Neurons in the brain stem which connects the brain with the spinal cord produce neurotransmitters such as serotonin and norepinephrine that keep some parts of the brain active while we are awake. Other neurons at the base of the brain begin signaling when we fall asleep. So these neurons appear to switch off the signals that keep us awake. Research also suggests that a chemical called adenosine builds up in our blood while we are awake and causes drowsiness. This chemical gradually breaks down while we sleep. According to Merriam Dictionary, sleep is a natural, easily reversible periodic state of many living things that is marked by the absence of wakefulness and by the loss of consciousness of one's surroundings, is accompanied by a typical body posture such as lying down with the eyes closed, the occurrence of dreaming and changes in brain activity and physiological functioning is made up of cycles of non-REM sleep and REM sleep and is usually considered essential to the restoration and recovery of vital bodily and mental functions. A period of inactivity, well that's according to Miriam Webster. And later on we are going to tackle and dive in what is non-REM and REM and what's more to sleep. So now, why is sleep important? So contrary to our quiet physical state, the brain is very active during sleep, carrying out many important functions. So sleep is essential to every process in the body affecting our physical and mental functioning the next day. Our ability to fight disease and develop immunity in our metabolism and chronic disease risk Sleep is essential to every process in the body, affecting our physical and mental functioning the next day. So, it is developing our immunity and our metabolism and possible chronic disease risk. Sleep is important for every part of the body and it is especially important for young children as their bodies and minds develop. So in young children, lack of sleep or poor quality sleep can be associated with difficult behaviors, lower capacity to learn and retain information, and propensity for poor eating patterns and weight gain. Well, adolescents need around 8 to 10 hours of sleep per night, but a high proportion do not get that amount. For example, recent estimates suggest that 60% of middle schoolers and 70% of high schoolers don't get adequate sleep on school nights. One of the main reasons adolescents are so sleep deprived is that biological changes in their brain affect when they feel sleepy. So even if they are sleep deprived, they often can go to bed early because their brain is not yet prepared to sleep. In school districts that have enacted later school starts time, 
research is consistently showing that students get more sleep and as a result have fewer motor vehicle accidents, better grades, and improve mental health. And that leads to how important is sleeping for our mental health? Well, sleep and mental health go hand in hand. Good sleep is essential for maintaining our baseline mental health, as one night of sleep deprivation can dr dramatically affect the mood on the next day. Chronic exposure to poor sleep quality is associated with depression, anxiety, and other conditions. There are also bidirectional associations, meaning that experiencing anxiety and depression very often affects sleep, which often impacts the ability to cope up with anxiety, depression, and so on. So does screen time really affect our sleep? There is evidence to show that screen use right before bed could have an impact to our sleep. One reason is that the blue light emitted from these devices can affect the secretion of melatonin, which is the hormone that helps signal to the body that it is time to fall asleep. Other reasons include the content of what is on the screen. If you watch a scary movie, read an emotionally driven article, or consume any other anxiety producing content on your screen, it can affect your ability to fall asleep. Sleep clinicians uh, suggest putting away all screens at least one hour before bed and to instead do some light or breathing or other relaxing activities that you could possibly do in order to fall asleep, according to Janssen 2020. Sleep is an essential function that allows your body and mind to recharge, leaving you refreshed and alert when you wake up. Healthy sleep also helps the body remain healthy and stave off diseases. Without enough sleep, the brain cannot function properly. This can impair your ability to concentrate, think clearly, and process memories. Most adults require between 7 and 9 hours of nightly sleep every night, while children and teen Agers need substantially more sleep, particularly if they are younger than 5 years of age. Work schedules, day-to-day -day stressors, a disruptive bedroom environment, and medical conditions can all prevent us from receiving enough sleep. A healthy diet and positive lifestyle habits can help ensure an adequate amount of sleep each night. But for some, chronic lack of sleep may be the first sign of a sleeping disorder. Now, let us tackle about the stages of sleep. In sleeping, we also have stages. So in some other books, um, it has like stages 1 to 5th, but on some other websites, which we are going to explore, it, say, it says that 1 to 3 is for non-REM, and, uh, and the other stage is for REM stage. So if you want to learn more about stages of sleep, then keep on watching. So for stages of sleep, once we fall asleep, our bodies follow a sleep cycle divided into four stages. So the first three stages are known as the non-rapid eye movement or the NREM sleep, and the final stage is known as the rapid eye movement or the REM sleep. One NREM, so this first stage marks the transition between wakefulness and sleep and consists of light sleep. So muscle relax and your heart rate breathing and eye movements begin to slow down and as do your brain waves which are more active when you are awake so stage one typically lasts several minutes and next is a stage two nrem which this second nrem sleep stage is characterized by deeper sleep as your heart rate and breathing rates continue slowing down and the muscles become more relaxed so eye movements will cease and your body temperature will decrease apart from some brief Moments of higher frequency electrical activity brain waves also remain slow. So stage two is typically the longest of the four sleep stages. Stage three NREM, so it plays an important role in making you feel refreshed and alert the next day. So heartbeat, breathing, and brain wave activity all reach their lowest levels and the muscles are as relaxed as they will be. So this will be longer at first and decrease in duration during the night. And lastly, the REM, the first REM stage will occur about 90 minutes after you fall asleep. As the name suggests, your eyes will move back and forth rather quickly under your eyelids. Breathing rate, heart rate, and blood pressure 
will begin to increase. Dreaming will typically occur during REM sleep and your arms and legs will become paralyzed. It is believed that this is intended to prevent you from physically acting out on your dream. The duration of each REM sleep cycle increases as the night progresses. Numerous studies have also linked REM sleep to memory consolidation, the process of convert converting recently learned experiences into long-term memories. The duration of REM stage will decrease as you age, causing you to spend more time in the NREM stages or the non-rapid eye movement. So these four stages will repeat cyclically throughout the night until you wake up. So for most people, the duration of each cycle will last about 90 to 120 minutes. And when sleep constitutes about 75% to 80% of each cycle, you may also wake up wake up briefly during the night but not remember it the next day. So that episode are known as the W stages. Now that we have tackled all about that, about sleeping and such, now we are going to tackle about insomnia. And also I'm going to give you some tips and techniques on how to deal with insomnia. So first of all, by definition, insomnia is a common sleep disorder. So with insomnia, you may have trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, or getting good quality sleep. This happens even if you have the time and the right environment, environment to sleep well. Insomnia can get in the way of your daily activities and make you feel sleepy during the days. So again, insomnia can get in the way of your daily activities and make, make you feel sleepy during the day. So it's really unfortunate, um, especially for the things that you have to do during the day to function since your insomnia is getting on the way. By the way, that definition was from www.nhlbi.nih.gov. All right, so I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to manage your insomnia. Again, just to manage your insomnia. So if you are curious about that, let's go. All right, so first is the cut down on sugar and caffeine. So sugar and caffeine, there are a lot of studies already that suggest that sugar and caffeine really has an effect to your sleeping patterns. While sugar gives you more energy and it hypes you up, caffeine also does that. It's giving you the energy up and then will bring it down. So it's really advisable to at least cut off your sugar and caffeine if not all. Next is exercise. It has been proven that getting active during the day can improve your sleep during the night. So exercise can really give you the quality of sleep you deserve. And stay away from alcohol and drugs. If you can really stay away from alcohol and drugs, no explanation needed. Go to bed. So go to bed. Just go to bed. That's the first thing you have to do in order to get a good night's sleep. Go to bed, lay yourself down there and be grateful. Um, one study suggests that being grateful allows you to be more contented, giving you more peace, inner peace that allows you to, to sleep better and to have a quality sleep. Because as, as we want to have a peace around our environment, it is also as vital as having inner peace. So external and internal peace goes hand in hand. And also meditate. Meditation is one of the best ways to get away with your insomnia. So just close your eyes and then listen to music. You can download it in Spotify or anything that keeps you calm. And then, you know, by three to five minutes, feel the presence and make use of the time to reflect, ponder, and imagine things that brings you joy, that brings you calm, relax, and peace. And next is breathe. Breathing exercise. That's what we are doing as well every before synchronous session. Breathe. Breathing exercise works wonders and put your problems away. It is also important to not worry during the night and just, just put your problems away. That allows you to be more calm and be more at 
it's you know at the state of you're getting there you're getting into a paradise of a beautiful sleep next is get bored so by being bored it means staying away from all the distractions and just you know be bored and sleep and before you sleep and that will lead you to NREM and hopefully get you to REM that allows you to be more calmer and more you know into a state of sleep and additionally wake up at the same time each day eliminate alcohol and stimulants like nicotine and caffeine limit naps exercise regularly limit activities in bed do not eat or drink right before going to bed and make your sleeping environment comfortable get all worrying all your worrying over with before you go to bed and reduce stress and also if you really want like a medication you can try the over-the-counter drugs so i will attach pictures also of the over-the-counter drugs to you know better your sleep So that's it for now for this video i hope that you got the beautiful insights as i did because i really had a great time researching and learning about these sleep patterns i hope I have more time to explain to you more but i'll be leaving everything behind to you i'm really i'm also gonna link down some articles and some videos for you to learn more about sleep so also gonna attach references to validate and so that you can also see where this information came from as to establish validity and credibility of this video so if you had a great time thank you so much for watching if you reached this far thank you so much i hope that you have a great time and, and give importance to sleeping as quality sleep really is important as it gives us the ability to function well and make use of our potential uh, use of our opportunities well so thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you had a great time and as always see you on my next video let's all have a beautiful and a quality sleep together bye for now and thank you so much miss aida if you're watching this uh, thank you so much for watching and reaching this part too see you next time bye